fall versus Halloween. What are you? I am fall. So today we're going to make this cute little placemat, mug rug, snack mat, whatever you want to call it, with a fabric napkin. Today's video is a collaboration. I want to thank the host, The Robin's Nest by Terry, Amethyst Adventures, Buckeye Girl Decor and Lifestyle. Their links will be down in the description, so be sure to check them out. There will also be a playlist of all the other people that are participating in this collaboration. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Jackie. And I want to personally welcome you to my channel, Jackie Russell Creates, where I give you tips, tricks, hacks, techniques on quilting and sewing. Whether it be a big project or a small project. So let's get started. So for this video, we're doing fall. I found this coloring sheet online. I just typed in free fall coloring sheet and found this one. <clears throat> so for this project you're going to need one eight and a half by eight and a half main fabric. Then you're going to need a contrasting fabric that is seven and a half by seven and a half. You'll need two of those. For the pocket you're going to need two that is four by eight and a half. Then you're going to need some scrap fabrics for your pattern, whatever you choose to do. <coughs> you're also going to need backing and batting that is 11 by 14 and a half. When you go to find your pattern and you just do the Google search, you need to check the license, make sure that you're able to use it for what you're designing it for. In this case, we are using it for personal use, so you're able to, or I'm able to use it. When I printed it, I just printed it shrunk it down to fit the eight and a half by eight and a half. Now if you're doing the fusible you need to trace it onto the back so then it is mirrored for you. If you're doing the wax paper you just trace it just like it is. When you trace you want to put it on the paper side of the fusible webbing and you want to leave about an eighth of an inch around pencil marking that you did and then you're going to press it onto the back side of your fabric. Then you're going to cut along the lines that you drew. Now to get started we're going to take the pocket fabric and we're going to take one of them and we're going to fold it in half with wrong sides together lining up those edges then you're going to press it to give a nice clean edge and then you're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to top stitch right along that fold line you can use contrasting color or a color that will blend in Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our main fabric and we're going to put the pocket with the fold side up, matching up those bottom edges. Then you're going to take the other piece and lay on top with the wrong side, a right side down, wrong side facing up, lining up those edges. This is going to be 
the pocket. You can do it on either side. I'm going to pin to hold all layers in place, mainly to help hold that pocket so it don't shift in between those fabrics as I'm sewing. And then you're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew just down the one side. Now we're going to set them seams and I am going to press it toward the big fabric. It has the less bulk and that is the direction that the fabric kind of wants to go. You normally would want to go to the darker side but because both of these are pretty dark in color I'm okay with going to the lighter side. Now we're ready to begin putting on our applique pieces. So I have pre-done some of them so you didn't have to watch me cut through them all. <coughs> but I'm going to peel off the back and look at my diagram and lay them down onto the fabric. You can also put them on a silicone mat if you would prefer before adhering them down. Now you could try to do the back pulling it off but if you actually score it with a pen like I did here it puts a crease in it and it comes off very nicely. So we're going to continue just to lay down down our pieces. We're going to cut them out and lay them according to our picture. <coughs> pieces down you just want to make sure that you leave enough space at the top and the bottom and the one side so you have your seam allowance so you need to make sure that you leave that extra quarter inch free So when you're tracing your image and you know that it's going to be overlapped, I like to bring in a little extra that's going to be overlapped. So then that way you can tuck it in and it's easier when you go to applique it down. If you didn't want to sew around all these little tiny pieces like the eye and the tail and the other foot, you can actually use Heat and Bond Ultra, which is a permanent adhesive, so then you did not have to sew around. I used Heat and Bond Light, so I'm going to have to stitch around each of my pieces. Sugar Me decided she wanted to come and help. She kept swishing her tail onto my pieces. 
but we managed to get it done in the end. <coughs> Once I had all the pieces to the position I kind of wanted them, I pressed them down before I continued on. That way that they were stuck down and sugar kind of keep moving them on me. So you just want to follow the instructions of your fusible that you were using. Now that we have them all pressed down, we are going to assemble our sandwich. So what you need to do is take your background fabric, put it with the pretty side down. If it's a directional, make sure it's going in the right direction. Then you're going to lay your batting on top of that. Straighten out all your pieces to make sure they're nice and flat. And then you're going to lay your piece on top smoothing it making sure it's nice and flat now here you can baste it you can use basting pins you can use basting spray because it is such a small project i am going to just use straight pins in the corners just to hold it down and flat until i begin doing the applique And you got to make sure that it stays nice and taut and no wrinkling or puckering in any of the layers. Once you have it all pinned now, we'll be taking it to the sewing machine and doing whatever stitching you want. You can do any type of quilting. Here I am talking about picking out the thread to match or contrast your design that you want to use. So I used dark brown. I used the tan color on the spots and the hair. And then I have an orange that I used for the rest and then of course I have the black for the <coughs> eyes and the nose and then the mouth that we will add on. When you stitch you want to make sure that you do at least a stitch in the ditch around the pocket and the main fabric that will just help hold it down. You can do my under stitching um, any type of quilting that you want around you gotta make sure you get every piece that you iron down attached if you're using the light fusible okay so now we have all of it appliqued down you can do more quilting along the outside if you want but I'm gonna leave it just like this now we need to trim off our batting so to trim it off, I'm just going to pull it back, pull back the back fabric because you don't want to trim that. And I'm just going to line up my ruler with the edge of my piece and just trim it. Making sure not to cut the back fabric. Unless you're doing the traditional binding, you don't want to cut this because we're going to use this extra to bind the rest of our quilt. Once you have your batting all trimmed, now we're going to trim our background fabric. And you need an inch. So I'm going to line up the inch mark of my ruler along the edge of the top fabric. 
and trim off the extra. And now that you have it trimmed, we're going to take the edge and fold it up over so it meets up against the edge of your batting and your top fabric. You're going to do that on all four sides. And if you want, you're folding over here, you can fold it over onto your main project and see if that is a good enough binding for you or if you want it a little smaller. And then once you have it all pressed, you're going to take your wonder clips I'm going to fold one corner up to cause a triangle right there. Then I'm going to fold that edge over and this edge over and that will cause or create, I can't say cause, it will create a miter corner. Once I have that created, I put a clip there to hold it in place. And then I just continue woo, clipping all the way around. And now that we have him all clipped, we're going to take him back to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch around the edge. Now you can hand stitch it. You can do a straight stitch along the edge. But I am going to do a leaf stitch to stitch it down. it all complete there it is bound with a decorative stitch now let's make our napkin to go in our pocket that is very simple you take your two pieces of seven and a half square put them right sides together and we're going to stitch around the outside leaving about an inch to an inch and a half to turn Now that we have it st stitched and we have our little opening here, we're going to clip our corners. Try not to clip your stitches. And you're going to turn it right side, poking out those corners. Then I'm going to fold under my seam allowance and I'm going to give this a press. <clears throat> it helps get them seams really nice to make sewing this top edge. And now we're just going to go and do a top stitch around the outside edge, making sure to get your seam in there. Trim off all your end pieces, fold it in thirds, and slide it down in your pocket. So now you have a mug rug with a reusable napkin. Well, here's our finished product without the supervisor, Sugar May, in the way. With our fabric napkin. We just fold it in thirds. Now, won't this be cute to have as a placemat around Thanksgiving or any time during the fall for those little ones? I want to thank our host, Robin's Nest, Amethyst Adventures, and Buckeye Girls decor and lifestyle for hosting this be sure to check out the playlist below and let me know are you halloween or are you fall check out this playlist up here to see the rest of the people's fall versus halloween or this other playlist to see all my fall and halloween projects until then happy quilting my friends Thank <laughs> you.